Bravo Wilson, we're entering the reserve near the Little Tory Bars. Over. Keep your eyes open and drive carefully. You should see lots of animals. Garage, that was supposed to look to your right. That almost black looking animal with the uh, white yellowish color spot on his back. That's a yellow back diker. Diker means diver. Dives into the bushes to, hold, to hide from predators. If you look over to your left here, the white bird with the pink tail. that is a yellow-billed stork. They're carnivores. They eat any meat smaller than them. Fish, frog, bird, snakes, any meat smaller than them. Now, I'm going to share a secret with you. The warden doesn't allow me to stop for photos, but as you can see, I've been known to take pauses, not stops. There's a difference. So if it's okay with you guys, we get a good opportunity for photos. I'll make sure to take some pauses. How does that sound? Sound like a plan? Uh, All right. Now, watering holes like this one are very important here in Harambe. It gives the opportunity, whoa, this is our lucky day, to see black rhinos. Now, black rhinos weigh about 3,000 pounds. Now, well, you know what? Let's get up ahead a little bit. Let's see if we get that tree out of the way just a little bit. Black rhinos weigh 3,000 pounds, charge at 35 miles an hour, and their skin is one inch thick. Oh, you know, we got a little bit of a better view right here. There's another black rhino right there. Wow, this is our lucky day. Two black rhinos. Yes, yeah, so they weigh 3,000 pounds, charge at 35 miles an hour, and their skin's one inch thick. Unfortunately, though, the black rhino comes with a sad story. There's only about 4,200 left due to poaching and illegal hunting. Isn't that sad, folks? Only 4,200 of those beautiful creatures are left. Now, located above you, you're going to see a game spotting guide. I took my time this morning, colored inside the lines and everything, just for you. There's some of the animals out here. We won't see all of them, but we usually get pretty good luck. Now, what kind of animals do you guys want to see today? Lions. What else do you want to see? Just elephants? Giraffes? Alligators? Crocodiles? Okay. If you look up to your left, that black and white bird is a saddle-billed stork. The largest stork in Africa stands about five feet tall, has a wingspan of about nine feet. Gets its name saddle-billed stork from that little yellow piece on its feet is shaped like a saddle. Now, how many of you are looking at that game spotting guide and you're saying to yourselves, you know, actually you did a really nice job, like a really nice job staying inside the lines and everything? But you would be like the best safari driver in the world if we could see all these animals. Raise your hand. Look above you. You've now seen them all. Just kidding. We're going to be out here for two weeks, so I'm pretty confident we'll be able to see all those animals. Whoa, look to your right. There is a hippo in water. Now, if you can't see them because of this lock here, Kuda Matata, no worries. There may be some more up ahead. Over at Salty River. We're going to head on over to Salty River right now, see if we can find some hippos. Oh, there's a family of hippos behind the island right here to our left. They're born at 85 pounds, full grown, they weigh about 5,000 pounds. They can hold their breath 5 to 8 minutes. A lot of people think when they see them moving in water that they're swimming. And although they can swim the majority of the time, they are just walking along the bottom. They spend the majority of their day in water, only come out to eat, they eat at 150 pounds of grass a day. Now the grayish looking birds on the island are pink back pelicans. They work together as a family to herd fish the shallow water. Just makes it easier for feeding. Now folks, we are going to have to cross a rickety bridge in a moment. I ask for no fast or sudden movements. Please remain seated. Nile crocodile. Look down to your left. You're going to see Nile crocodile. Nile crocs are more aggressive than the American alligator. You may see some of them with their mouths open. That's how they regulate their body temperature. Uh, I just ate breakfast though. I don't want to be breakfast. Let's get out of here. Hey, Warden, this is simple. One over. Roger that. Well, so thanks for the tip. We'll head that way in a moment. But first, we're going to check out a completely different ecosystem. Speaking of completely different, check out that upside down looking tree right there to our right. That's a baobab. Baobabs can survive long droughts from the amount of water they hold in their massive trunks. They also go leafless just like that, nine months out of the year.
Okay, so everyone, get your cameras ready. So this is my favorite view on the entire reserve, the Serengeti grassland. Everyone go, ooh. Everyone go, ah. The Serengeti grassland stretches for hundreds of miles in East Africa. Super highway for millions of migrating animals at home is some of your favorites like lions and giraffes. This is the wild Africa. We're working so hard to preserve. If you look to your right, those little tiny fellows, the black and white stripe, they are Thompson gazelles. They may look like babies, but they are full-grown Thompson gazelles. They don't get much bigger than that. Full-grown, they only weigh a little over 60 pounds, about 65 to be exact. They're the second fastest lion mammal. And do you want to know what the fastest lion mammal is? Cheetah. Cheetah, that's correct. Anyone know why? Because they're cheetahs. <laughs> now folks, it's a really great area to have those cameras out and ready. You never know when or what kind of animals we're going to see. Oh, wow. Now also, here's a little tip for you. If you have an action setting or a sport setting on those cameras, you might want to switch that to that setting or like a kids and pet setting. Any type of motion setting, even though we may be paused, not move, not stopped. I see I see you guys trying to trick me back there. Even though we may be paused, not stopped, the animals will still be moving. So it helps you get a better picture of an animal instead of a tree. Whoa, look, running up the hill there to our left. There's a sable antelope. Oh, it looks like there's a few sable antelopes up there to our left there. Sable antelopes are the emblem of the Harambe Reserve. Their horns get up to about 50 to 60 inches in length. They use their horns to spar to show dominance, also for courtship. Now to our left are, all right, now the giraffe closest to us under the tree there is a Maasai giraffe. He's an oak leaf pattern on his coat. Full grown, only stands about 14 to 19 feet tall. This giraffe right here, we're going to try and get a picture of the one not hiding behind the tree there. This is a reticulated giraffe. See the difference in their patterns? This is a reticulated giraffe. Gets its name from the Latin word reticulata, which means net. Refers to the net-like pattern on its coat. Born at 6 feet tall, full grown, stands about 18 to 20 feet tall. Now this tall cone of earth right next to us is a term right now. They look like dirt, but it's hard as concrete. Elephants use them as scratching posts. When they're low enough to the ground, zebras and antelopes climb on top of them to watch out for predators. Now they are edible. I make a really good termite mound stew. I'll make it one night around the campfire for everyone. I see some of you making faces back there. It's delicious. Tastes just like chicken noodle soup without chicken and well without the noodles. I'm going to get a beautiful view right here of this giraffe. Now can anyone tell me what kind of giraffe this is? Oh, yeah. Reticulated, wow, game spotters all, game identifiers, all right, you are correct. Anyone remember how tall it is when it's born? Six feet. Six feet. Anyone remember how tall it gets full grown? Eighteen. Eighteen at twenty, wow, all right, now this is a really hard one. Reticulated comes from the Latin word reticulata, which means? Oh, wow, you guys are good. Whoa, check out the horns on this cattle to our left and right. This is named Cooley cattle, also known as Watusi cattle, after the tribe that domesticated them. Those horns do get up to about 6 feet from tip to tip, 20 inches in circumference along the base. See a little Thompson gazelle on the grass right there to our right. Now this is the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. The word Harambe means to work together. And that's exactly what these animals do. They work together to create this beautiful landscape. You'll see that there's all types of trees laying down there. The elephants come in like bulldozers. They knock over trees along the grasses to spread. Giraffes, they're pruning shears. They eat leaves off the trees, helping sunlight to commit. Zebras and antelopes mow down the grasses, helping shoots to pop up. And little nibblers, such as gazelles and warthogs, clean up the edges. In a balanced natural system, there's enough food for everyone, including us with those termite mounds. Now to our left, there's tan animals, our Patterson elan. Largest antelope in Africa stand about six feet tall at the shoulders. That's just from hoof to shoulder. Does not include their head nor their horns. To our left, under the trees, the gray animals with the black tails under there are white bearded wildebeest. They are the largest migration left in all the world. Over a million and a half migrate each year in Africa. Let me take a quick little pause here and kind of turn around and get a good view of one under the tree there. Ready? Three, two, one. We get it. Alright. This is on a Thompson Gazelle up there by himself. He's just hanging out. Got tired of hanging out with the crew, I guess. Monkey's 
point over. Keep your eyes open for me. We picked up a baby elephant that was wandering off on its own. Oh no. We can't find the mother. I'm afraid poachers may be in the reserve. Oh no, poachers really? Oh Wilson, I got a crew on board, might be able to help us out. What do you say? Can we help Wilson keep an eye out for those poachers? Asante Sana, thank you very much. Whoa, look to your right. There is an African elephant. Now you know how I know that that's an African elephant. We're in Africa. Now if you look at flapping its ears back and forth, it's trying to use its ears as a giant fan. Hey, would you guys like to see some more elephants? All right, we're going to take a shortcut, head over to Clay Pit. Also going to tune into a radio station here. Only place on reserve we get frequency. Now I know the sign says road closed here, but it could have went out of no worries. They reopened the road and moved the sign to the side so we could go through. So to pick the road up ahead. Now they are elephant footprints. Looks like there was a herd of elephants. Just like a quick pause. I thought I saw a trunk move behind those trees there. Maybe not. Continue on our shortcut here. Now I love taking this shortcut because if you look to your left, sometimes in this clearing here, you get a glimpse of mandrel monkeys running along back there. Mandrels are very shy and reclusive, so difficult to see them sometimes. The most colorful monkey in the world, the largest monkey in Africa. Uh, I'm gonna turn the radio off here. I thought they fixed this. Um, on second thought with that noise, just cross your fingers to be on the safe side. I'm serious, let me see those fingers. Cross those fingers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Feed to the right, whoa, lean to the right, save the driver, whoa, whoa. Who did cross their fingers? Ooh, that was a close one. Is everyone okay back there? Ooh, let's get out of here. We're now entering clay pit. If you look down on the ground and on the walls, you'll see some elephant foot marks and some post marks. That's because elephant eat clay. Gives them minerals that are not in their diet. Both male and female elephants have ivory tusks which unfortunately they are poached for even on reserves like Harambe. Here's an interesting fact about elephants. They can communicate with one another. Researchers on the Harambe Reserve study these vocalization patterns. The more we know about these animals, the better. We're able to help protect them. Now this is Clay Pit. Wilson said he saw a lot of elephant activity. Well, I'm not seeing any. I hope those poachers aren't on the reserve. Now coming up to our left is Flamingo Island. These are greater flamingo, pale as the color of all flamingos. Now, flamingos are born gray. Does anyone know how they get their pink color? Shrimp, that is correct. They like to eat tiny brine shrimp and anything else high in keratin. It is the keratin that gives them their pink color. Now, wow, you guys are good. I didn't even need to tell you that. All right, I'm going to see who's paying attention. In the beginning, I shared a really sad story about black rhino. Does anyone remember how many are left? You, sir, are driving the truck by tomorrow. Well, here is a happy story. White rhino were hunted nearly to extinction, but through anti-poaching efforts and widespread conservation, their numbers have been brought up to sustainable levels. Isn't that great news? Shows you conservation really does work. It really does help the animals. Well, look to your left. There's a family of white rhinos. And like I said, white rhinos are Africa's best success story. You know what? Let's go around this road here so we can get a better view. Now real quick, look down on the ground to your right, you're going to see ostrich eggs like three pounds a piece. And there's another white rhino all the way up the trail there. Now white rhino are double the size of black rhino. They weigh about 5,000 pounds. They're actually called white rhino, white meaning wide, referring to their wide mouths. 
I see you at the junction. I suggest you go west. It will be worth it. Oh, Roger, that looks like we're going to head west right now. I wonder what he sees. Now, difficult to see, but behind that tree, that kind of fallen tree, there is a cheetah. You can just see its head. The cheetah are the fastest line animals. Spread anywhere from 60 to 70 miles per hour. They also hunt during the day because they use their sense of sight rather than their sense of smell. Now the large rock formation coming up in front of us, known as a kofi, tends to be a dwelling place for lions. However, lions lay around 18 to 20 hours a day, so sometimes they're in the grass and you just won't see them because they're lying down. Oh, the lions lying down. Oh, there's a male line. Oh, this is especially, we're going to take a quick pause, snap those photos because I'm not sure how long he's going to be sitting up for. They usually do lay perfectly flat. They lay around 18 to 20 hours a day, then they hunt together as a pride, as a family. Now the white animals with the long curly horns to our right, they're addicts. They're desert dwellers. They can go indefinitely without water. They do not need to drink water to survive. They get all the moisture they need from the plants that they eat. Oh, well, it looks like he's still sitting up. Hang on. Just a moment. <laughs> now, contrary to common belief, it's the female lion that initiates the majority of the hunting. Do we get the photo? Do we get a good photo? In three, two, one. All right. Contrary to common belief, it's the female lion that initiates the majority of the hunting. They do hunt together as a pride, as a family. Oh, but hey, there's a warthog. Look to your left here. There is a warthog. Warthogs use their tusks. I've seen that movie. Well, warthogs use their tusks to build these burrows. They back into them, leaving their tusks exposed. Helps them ward off predators. On the ground to our left are ostriches. Oh. Now, even though they have wings, they do not fly. They run about 40 miles an hour. See another set of ostrich eggs on the ground to our left. There's another white rhino to our right. So we're going to drive straight till about 5. I've turned my, bound sandwich, I've turned my sandwiches for lunch and we'll turn my bound soup for dinner. We'll drive straight through. We'll stop, set up camp, have campfire time, turn my mouth stew. Sound like a plan? Yeah. All right. Well, what do you say? Can we help Wilson cut off those poachers? Uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's see what we can help with. Uh oh. This does not look too good. Maybe also this is simple one. We'll head it off the reserve at East Gates. Looks like the poachers are ahead of us. Which way should we go? Over. The poachers are heading east. Keep going and just drive them to my front door. Over. Roger that wasn't folks. Hang on, this could get a little bumpy. Oh no, geysers. You might get a little wet. Sorry, hang on. Oh no, oh no, oh no. We made it past those geysers. Uh-oh. More geysers. Hang on. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wilson, this does not look good. Get us out of here. Watch out on the right. Watch out on the left. Oh, no. This does not look good at all. Poacher camp. 12 o'clock. Wilson, this is simple one. We found their camp, but I'm afraid it's too late. Oh, not to worry. You drop them right into my patrol. Awesome. That's great news. Any other updates? How are the elephants? Over. You're welcome, Wilson. Anytime. Glad we can help. I have to go now. We have to get this baby elephant back to his father. Hey, folks, thanks so much for helping me catch those poachers. I couldn't have done them without you. You were behind me the entire time. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut our two-week adventure. 
just a tiny bit short. I'm going to drop you up ahead at the local works post. From there, just a short hike back to the Haram Bay Village. If you're interested in some more up-close wildlife, head on over to Pangani Trails. You may see a gorilla or some mole rats. And remember, no matter where you live, you can always help your local wildlife. It does not need to be on a reserve like ours. If you're interested in some more wildlife, like I said, you can head over to Pangani Forest. Don't also head over to...